Hi, my name is David Johansson, and this is Blossom Hill Crafts Pottery School. This month, our uh, challenge is to throw a stacker. A stacker means taking one pot, I've got f a four pound cylinder here, and stacking another pot on top of it. This is a two pound cylinder. And the idea is that you're going to stack these two pots together and be able to make one that is bigger. And this right here is a six pound vase made from a four pound and a two pound vase. So that is what it means to throw a stacker. Now if you can throw a six pound cylinder and get it up nice and tall, there'd be no need to stack it. If you can throw an eight pound cylinder, there'd be no need to stack two four pound cylinders. But what this does is allows you to get a bigger cylinder than you can throw out of one piece of clay. If you're coming up to our studio and you notice on the hillside some of the four and five foot pots, those pots were thrown as stackers, starting with a 25 pound pot and then stacking another 25 pound pot on top of it and so forth. You can stack as many cylinders as you like. So a word about the bottom cylinder. So again, I'm stacking six pounds here. Um, so you have to, in order to do this, you'd have to be able to center four pounds and two pounds, and I think many of you can do that. So this bottom cylinder here is four pounds. You never want to get the inside bottom of a stacker too narrow. You want to be able to fit your hand in it nice and easy. And the top rim of the bottom pot has to be fairly thick because I'm going to put a groove in the top edge. And I'm, I'm hoping, maybe I should pop this off of here real quick and uh, just make sure that you can see this is a tight bat wow um, make sure that you can see the groove there in the top do you see how I've got a groove right there in the top all I did was I just pressed that groove in with my finger and make sure this one gets down on there tight all I did when the wheel was spinning is I just pressed my finger down into the top of the pot and I made a groove. So that's the bottom pot, a four pound cylinder with a thick rim and a groove pressed into the rim. Now the top pot is a two pound cylinder thrown without a bottom. A two pound cylinder thrown without a bottom. And the top here is going to be the tongue that fits into the groove. So if I made the groove with my pointer finger, the tongue should be just a little bit narrower than my pointer finger and then the two of them are going to fit together very nicely. Now another word about the cylinders that you're going to stack. Before you stack them, they have to firm up. You don't want them leather hard, but you want them getting close to leather hard. They really do need to be quite firm. And there's a couple of ways you can accomplish this. Uh, the first one would be to throw these cylinders right at the beginning of your class. Uh, that would be my suggestion always and then uh, put them outside and in indirect sunlight. You don't want sun beating down on them and let the indirect sunlight and the wind dry them out. Pay attention because if it's a hot day this can happen very quickly. They can get too dry. Um, you could also uh, take the two cylinders off of the wheel and put them under the heat lamp. You could use a hair dryer uh, in the studio to dry the pot out or the torch. If the torch is intimidating to you, just ask your instructor and we'll help you through the process of using a torch. It's, it's really a pretty simple thing to do. But at any rate, this wall, it has to get fairly firm. You shouldn't be able to move it, I'm, you know, uh, easily. I mean, you're going to be, you're going to have to manipulate it so it can't be leather hard and it can't be dry, but um, you want to get it fairly firm. So the bottom cylinder, I've got this groove here. And before I stack them, I need to um, take something like a serrated rib. If you don't have one of these serrated ribs, they're a really handy tool. They're really inexpensive. I think they're under a couple bucks. We sell them here at the studio. You can buy them at Clay Planet. Probably get them really cheap if you ordered them online somewhere. Uh, just a super handy tool for scoring. Um, so I'm just going to take my serrated metal rib and I'm going to score this groove that I've made here. Now, um, you can also use your needle tool, but one of the problems with the needle tool is that it's really easy to get your scoring too deep, and you really don't want deep scoring for a lot of reasons. Um, it can cause your pot to, to fail. Um, I'm not really going to get into that in this video, but scoring shouldn't be super deep. Uh, 
So now that I've scored this bottom pot, I'm, I'm just going to take a little bit of water on a sponge and just get that wet. I do not need to get it soaking wet and I do not need to put slip in there. This water on that clay that I just scored has created plenty of slip for me and that's going to work just fine. So now I've got my, uh, my top cylinder, which is the tongue, and I'm going to take that same serrated rib and I'm just going to score this up. And I'm going to take a little bit of water on there just like that and now I'm going to set the two together and this is the beauty of the tongue and the groove is that I'm able to get those two together and centered really easily so I now uh, can spin and I've got the two pots spinning and what I have to do is I have to get the bat off of the top pot I want to note something I want to uh, just recognize something here I have not wired these pots off of their bats that's important. So after you throw the pot, while they're setting up and getting firm, do not wire them off the bat. But now I do need to get this top pot off the bat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stick tool and I'm going to go right where the pot and the bat are meeting and I'm going to just create a groove right at the bat there. And I'm sure you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm just creating, and it's not a deep groove, it's a nice light groove. And now I'm going to take my wire tool and I'm going to stick it into that groove all the way along which is getting my wire tool right up next to the bat and now I'm just going to pull it off and that's pretty easy to do because that top pot does not have a bottom or in this case I mean <laughs> for all practical purposes there's no bottom it is made less than a 32nd of an inch uh, thick so now I've got my my uh, top pot on top of my bottom pot and I just need to get the joint connected so I've got a groove, I guess like that, and a tongue like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the groove up over the tongue on both the inside and the outside. So I've got my sponge um, and I'm just going to get the clay a little bit wet. I don't want to soak it, that's important, on both the inside and the outside right where I'm working. I want to just focus on not getting the clay too wet. And so now I'm just going to pull this clay up and I like to use my my knuckle when I'm pulling up but I'm just pulling that up just like that I got a little bit of extra clay there that's fine and now I'm just I'm just pulling these two cylinders together applying water when I need so that I don't uh, get too much water on there I don't want to turn this clay back into mud and I'm just pulling that joint together and there we go I now have my two pots pulled together so I now need to come in here with a rib and rib this joint and compress the clay and make it really strong and for that I'm going to use this wooden rib and you have one like this or very similar to it in your toolkit if you're a student here at Blossom Hill Crafts um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this rib right on the side of the pot, the long side, just like that. Um, and the mistake I, meet, I see a lot of people making when they're compressing is they put the rib on the side of the pot and then they take the side of their finger and they do this. But the problem with that is if I'm compressing the clay between the side of my finger and that rib, I'm creating drag along the entire surface of that rib and I guarantee you my pot's going to twist. It's too much drag. What I want is my inside finger, just a fingertip, going to one point on this wooden rib. Just one point. The wooden rib stays firm. The, f the inside finger is pushing the clay to the wooden rib. Just a fingertip. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the rib and the finger together. And you should see clay just gathering up at one point on the rib. So it looks like this. I got some, some decent speed on the wheel and I'm pushing out with an inside finger not super hard I'm not shaping the pot I'm just compressing the pot alright you see how I did that I'm gonna do that one more time here I'm gonna come down just a little bit lower and there we go I now have 
my two halves or my two cylinders joined pretty well. Now the other thing, uh, this top cylinder, I turned it upside down. And when, you, when I threw this cylinder, right, the area at the bottom is always a little thicker than the top. So when I turned it upside down, I should have some thickness here that I can pull up. And so I'm going to do that now. Again, I'm going to put a little water on the pot, but I'm being careful not to soak the pot because I certainly, I, want, I don't want to start getting the pot um, super wet. I'm going to push in with my knuckle here, out with the finger to sort of create a groove just like I always do, like I've shown in the beginning pottery. You can also do it like this if you're more comfortable like that. I like to throw with my knuckle. And we're just going to bring that clay up. And I don't feel like fighting with this clay that connected with the bat. So I'm going to take just a little bit of it off and be done with it. This is also our studio reclaim. And every now and then there's a little bit of something in it, like a piece of bisque or something. And I think maybe I've got a little something in here right by the rim. But we, we aren't going to worry about that. Sometimes the reclaimed clay is, is like that, but we're going to just... All right, see where we are with this. Good enough for now. So now you're at this stage where you've got a, uh, you've got a cylinder. Um, but what are you going to do with it? What do you do with a tall cylinder? How do you begin to shape it? Well, in the shaping of a tall cylinder, there's a couple of things that you should know. Uh, the first one is, where are the weak points? So the weakest point of this cylinder is right down here at the bottom. And the reason that it's weak is that it, it, it's supporting all the weight. The next weakest part of the cylinder is right in here. It's the top part of the cylinder right here. And the reason that it's weak is it's, nothing is connecting it across the top. The strongest part of the cylinder is right in the middle. Um, it's a little counterintuitive, but that's the strongest point. And that's where we're going to start shaping, is right in the middle of the cylinder. So um, I'm also, usually when you're shaping a tall cylinder, you're trying to create volume. So if you're going to create volume, you have to push out. So I'm going to start right at the middle. I'm going to take one fingertip with a little bit of water on it. Now, this clay was allowed to dry up a little bit, so I may have to put some water on it. Usually, if, if you... If your clay hasn't dried up, you certainly don't want to put water on it when you're shaping. But if it's dried up a little bit, that's fair game. So I'm going to take one fingertip on the inside, and I'm just going to push out. I'm hoping you can see that. I pushed straight out there, and really only just a quarter of an inch. That's my very first move. I go to the center of the pot, and I push out. Now I'm going to follow that all the way up and out. So, I didn't start at the bottom of the pot. Had I started that curve at the bottom of the pot, somewhere in here I'd very likely have a twist. That's an awful lot to ask of the clay. So I pushed out for the first time right there, so I'm going to go right below where I pushed out, or I pushed out right in there. I'm going to go right below where I pushed out the first time and push out again. No more than a quarter of an inch. And we're going to bring this clay up again. Now I know I'm going to gather in the top up here, so I'm not really bringing it in the top yet. I, I mean, I'm not... Uh, so there we go. Now I'm going to go right below where I went out the last time. I'm going to push out a quarter of an inch. And we're going to come up just like that. All right. Can you see that? I'm going to come in here and just compress this clay a little bit. I'm going to use a, me a, a metal rib on the inside and a wooden rib on the outside. Right where the joint is, just make sure that that joint is nice and strong. Very gentle. I'm using the left, the inside, on, a, on the inside I'm using a metal rib. 
just this part of the rib. I'm holding the metal rib like this. On the outside, I'm using a wooden rib. Whenever I use two ribs, the metal rib is always on the inside. The wooden rib is always on the outside. And I'm grabbing it just like that. So now I'm going to come down again a little bit lower, just right below where I pushed out before. I'm going to push straight out. And I'm going to come up very gently into my curve again. And there we go. So I could keep doing that all the way to the bottom of the pot, but in this case that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do uh, a shape a little bit more like the one I showed you at the beginning. So now I need to push the clay out down here. So I'm going to come down to the bottom of the pot, the weakest part of the pot, and my first move is I'm just going to get rid of some of that clay at the bottom and I'm going to push in just a little bit at the bottom down in there and now I'm going to pull that clay up and out up and out so I'm beginning to get that shape that I had but right in here I need to do just a little bit of collaring so we're going to put a little bit of water in there and collaring requires the clay to have some water on it there's no doubt about that so I'm going to collar this in And there we go. I'm going to work on my shape there. So now we're starting to get a little bit of a, a vase shape here. I'm going to collar in the top, put some water on the outside of the pot, and I like to use really just a full handed collar here. Bring that clay in. Compress the rim a little bit. And there you go. We start to have kind of a nice looking little pot here. Got ourselves a six pound vase. I'm going to trim a little, weigh a little bit of the clay at the bottom so you can see what the bottom looks like. When I throw a taller form like this, I tend to wheel trim right away. I do very little trimming after the pot is complete. So I just drop my stick tool down in there, using it like a knife. I'm going to take my needle tool, cut that little bit of clay out of there, and voila. There we go. We've got ourselves a six-pound vase thrown from a four-pound cylinder and a two-pound cylinder. Thanks a lot. I'm Dave Johansson. This is Blossom Hill Crafts, and I really encourage you to give this project a try. If you do make it, please uh, post a picture on our Facebook page. I'd love to see it. Uh, you can find us at facebook.com forward slash Blossom Hill Crafts. Thank you very much. Bye now.